So welcome to this presentation and thank you to Cameron for setting it up. Um, I would just quickly go through why study in Australia. Um, so as Cameron mentioned, my name is Mary Richardson and I'm International Relationships Manager at the University of Western Australia in Perth, WA. Um, so we're going to have a look at uh, just a little brief thing. What do you know about Australia itself? 10 facts about studying in Australia, higher education in Australia, the student experience, and then of course our University of Western Australia. <clears throat> so, um, okay, here we are, we're an island, quite a big island, in fact a continent in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but we're here in Perth and directly up here is Thailand and Bangkok. Um, so we are the largest island and we are also the sixth largest country in the world. So we have got a lot of space and a lot of land in, in Australia. Um, we have our own um, native animals for you to visit when you come here, and I'm sure you're familiar with most of these, especially the koala and the kangaroo. But in Perth, WA, we have a special treat for you, the quokka. If you don't recognize this guy here, he's actually a Hollywood um, movie star, um, Chris Hemsworth. Um, who is living in Australia as well. And when people come to Perth, they like to go to Rottnest Island to visit the quokka and take quokka selfies. So that can be on your bucket list. So we've got the ko koala, the kangaroo and the quokka. <clears throat> Another thing that, Perth, uh, that people visit Perth for and visit Australia for is our beautiful beaches there. Um, so that's the Gold Coast, so the Gold Coast to the other coast. So we will see famous landmarks. You will see on Cameron's background, you have the iconic Sydney Opera House. In the middle of our vast country is uh, Uluru and um, the Twelve Apostles just on Ocean Road outside of Melbourne. Okay, so 10 facts about studying in Australia. We are the third most popular international student destination in the world. We are might be a small country, 24.5 million, but we're world leaders in education. Australia is currently home to nearly 700,000 international students. So that's an 11% increase in international student numbers since 2017. And it is because of our high quality education, easy access to student support services and our multicultural society and fantastic lifestyle. We here in Australia have seven of the world's top 100 universities and they are listed there uh, with UWA, the University of Western Australia, of course, being one of them. Our education institutions may be relatively young compared to universities such as the UK's Oxford or the US Harvard, but they are right up there with the best. The University of Melbourne, so you can see all of those universities, which you may or may not be familiar with. We have one of the best higher education systems in the world, 22,000 courses, 1,100 institutions, our system is ranked eighth in the Universitas 2019 under 21 ranking. Um, higher than France, Germany, Norway and Japan. So we have a great emphasis on student experience and graduate outcomes. So international students report almost 90% satisfaction scores for their living and study experience in Australia. Seven of the best student cities in the world are in Australia. And they are all of our major cities, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Canberra, Adelaide, and Perth. And we are located in Perth, which is the nearest one to you. 
So the Australian government has invested over 300,000 million Australian dollars in scholarships. You may be um, aware of the 3,000 Australian award scholarships and short courses. So the government is supportive of our international students. And our universities rank in the world's top 50 in a huge range of study areas, including arts and humanities, clinical, preclinical health, engineering and technology, life sciences, physical sciences, and social sciences by the Times Higher Ed. So we have 2.5 million international alumni, which makes a global difference. Um, and on our next slide, here is one of our Nobel, 15 Nobel laureates. And this picture here is our very own UWA professor, Barry Marshall, who is a Nobel Prize laureate in physiology or medicine. Um, we, higher education in Australia, we have 43 universities in Australia and three main types of higher education, um, bachelor, master and doctoral degrees. Okay, so that's a, a wrap on Australia wide. We do actually put a lot of investment um, into the student experience. So uni life, we have a very, this is at UWA, I'm speaking on behalf of, we have a very supportive learning atmosphere with like-minded students and tutors who want to help you during your studies. And assignments are often done in teams, which builds collaboration and communication skills, because these are the soft skills that employers are looking for. Um, the journey with our students starts even before you come to UWA, we have got a platform called UniBuddy. You can just Google UniBuddy and you can chat to a student from Thailand or from the course of interest before you come here and ask them anything you like. Um, you can expect world-class teaching and state-of-the-art facilities and the campuses are usually equipped with best technologies and plenty of spaces for you to study and collaborate. In fact, uh, UWA has many, many multi-million dollar new facilities for collaborative spaces. Um, and also we have got the trading room, which is the biggest trading room in the Southern Hemisphere in the business school. Um, so there are lots of facilities that uh, will help you. Food is very important, and we all love to go to Thailand for your amazing Thai food. And we know that when you come here, you want to buy Thai food. And I happen to know many Thai people on their travels to and from Perth. And maybe a couple of years ago, they couldn't find Thai food, but now everything is readily available at supermarkets, in restaurants um, around Australia, not only. Thai food, but lots of cuisine, Indian, Chinese, um, European, and Aussie favorites. So some Aussie foods to try are Vegemite. It's in a black jar. It's very good for vitamin B. Some people love it or hate it. It's an Aussie icon. Tim Tams are a favorite. They're like a chocolate sandwich biscuit. Lamingtons, like a sponge cake dipped in chocolate and rolled in coconut. And believe it or not, we actually eat our um, national icon, the kangaroo. But it is a very healthy meat for you to try on our barbecue. Seafood is amazing. And I know that um, lots of uh, Asian people just love seafood. So we are an island surrounded by oceans and packed with seafood. So on the weekends, as I mentioned before, we're an island surrounded by the beautiful Indian Ocean here in Perth. And so our outdoors, we are the great outdoors. We have lots of places to explore and it's all about oceans, rivers, beaches. Um, so if you like the outdoors, this is the place for you. We love our weekends. It's an excuse to head outside and relax 
and we have world-class beaches and our wildflowers are actually in season right now and we have lots of beautiful parks and places for you to explore. We are sports nuts, I have to admit, in Australia. Um, the football season has just now come to an end, but here in Perth, we have an amazing new facility called Optus Stadium, which um, hosts our cricket and Australian rules football and also music and concert events. Um, we have lots of sport, rugby league, tennis, swimming, surfing, basketball, netball, you name it. And all of these types of sports have clubs at UWA. So you will always be able to join a club to socialize when you come. Working in Australia is a question that we always get asked about and we are glad to bring it to your attention that on an international student visa, you are actually allowed to work part time up to a maximum of 40 hours per fortnight. Fortnight is two weeks. So that's a period of 14 days. So it's like 20 hours per week. But the reason they put 40 hours per fortnight is because sometimes students may have exam week and they don't want to work at all. And then the following week, they may have a break. So they may be available to work maximum hours. So it's pretty flexible every two weeks. Um, you, we encourage you to find a work-life balance Australia itself is pretty laid back compared to some countries, like especially Japan, when I went there and they were working at 10 p.m. I was like, this would never happen in Australia. Um, I have actually hosted some international students at my home. And this was a great experience for me and for my family because they used to say, we love living in Australia because you get to go home in the afternoon and spend family time and go to the beach and hang out together. And my Japanese students would say that is something they had never experienced. Um, we will help you to find a job. Uh, we have an amazing career center at our university which posts jobs and helps you to do your resume and to look for jobs. There are obviously some search engines that you will probably be familiar with. If not, they're here on the screen, seek.com, indeed.com, and we have studentjobboard.com.au where you can search for um, positions. So uh, the career prospects and employability after graduation, <clears throat> you may be eligible to undertake post-study work. Um, so on a student visa at the moment, you can stay back um, to work in Australia after you graduate. Education providers and government bodies will help connect students with potential employers at career fairs, uh, job boards and networking in every territory and state. Um, if you're considering staying in Australia uh, and work after your student visa expires, you'll need to get a new visa from DHA Home Affairs. So uh, just a little wrap up for our particular university. Welcome to the University of Western Australia. And that is a photo there of students hanging out before our iconic building, Winthrop Hall. So, as I mentioned before, we are in the zone, a similar time zone. Actually, we are one hour ahead of you guys today. So we are the nearest city in Australia. You will see us here, this blue one. Um, and we are at the gateway to Australia. Oh, you see all of these countries within our reach, and then they can easily carry on to the East Coast. So we are close to home. <clears throat> so Perth itself has got strong economic growth, average of 3.5% in the last 10 years. And actually, I was just saying to my sister earlier that 
at the moment, an unlikely consequence of COVID-19 is that WA has got currently the strongest economy in the world. So it's setting us in good stead for when the borders open, which fingers crossed, we are hoping for early 2021. Um, so we also have 8% above national average on wages. I believe that part-time work here in WA at the moment is about $20 an hour for like working in McDonald's and things like that. So we have the lowest cost of living in a major city um, in Australia at the moment. So Perth, you can save on living costs. And also we have a 40% discount on all public transport for students. So you get a travel card, kind of like your travel card you have in Thailand. And you can use this for bus, train, or the ferry. And it will end up 40% cheaper than, say, if Cameron or I were to use the same card. What is very important is for parents, I think, and family for when you're doing your research, is to know that we are a very safe, friendly city with an unrivaled lifestyle. So 30% of the population were born overseas, including myself coming from Ireland. Um, and there are 270 languages spoken in Perth. Um, 59,000 international students we have here in WA, and we are the 14th most livable city in the world, which is pretty amazing. Um, over eight hours of sunshine a day <clears throat> and a very good air quality. So um, I'll just give you, go on to an overview of our UWA courses, undergrad first. Okay, so we're, we're dividing our courses into knowledge areas for 2021. So we're starting off with agriculture, environmental and biological sciences. <clears throat> so we've got a Bachelor of Science, which is three years, and we have got a whole list, can't count them, of um, majors, agribusiness, you can see them all here on screen. Um, I will share this with Cameron, and you can also, I will send you the presentation if you need to be, so I know it's too difficult to take notes and too much information, so I will share with you. Thank you. Um, we've got agriculture, environmental and biological science, new uh, combined major and master degrees. So these new courses are, you start off with a bachelor and you end up with a master within four years of study, because we know that we're competing for many years with the UK, the one year master. So this new course model, will make it more competitive, offering you a combined bachelor and master within four years. Um, in all of these subject areas, for example, agribusiness is a bachelor of science and a master of agriculture, economics, bachelor of science and ag econs, bachelor of science and master of agricultural sciences. So we, the list goes on biological science, earth science, with geoscience, environmental science, and a master of environmental, and marine science with master of uh, environmental science or biological sciences. So I'm thinking these, these combined bachelor and masters will be of interest for students for the future. Um, we have got architecture, design, and planning. So you start off, you can either do a Bachelor of Arts, which is three years, Human Geography and Planning, or a Bachelor of Environmental Design with these majors. You can take Architecture as a double major, Environmental Geography and Planning, or Landscape Architecture. In the knowledge area Business and Law, we've got the Bachelor of Arts with the, the major in Criminology, Work and Employment Relations, Law and Society. The 
batch of business, which is new in 2021. It's three years, Bachelor of Business Management, Enterprise and Innovation and Global Business. And this one has got a lower entry requirement, which I'll share with you, than our previous um, bachelors. And we have Bachelor of Commerce with the eight majors that we've had for a few years now. Um, and business law, we've got, we call it Bachelor of PPE, Philosophy, Politics and Econs, and a combined Bachelor and Master's degree in Economics, together with Master of Economics. Data and Computer Science, we've got three-year Bachelor in Computer Science, Data Science and Cybersecurity. And we've got a new one called Bachelor of Advanced Computer Science. It's an honors. So it's four years and you can do AI, cybersecurity, and data science. Our engineering, you start off with a three-year Bachelor of Science, Engineering Science, and all of these majors you can choose. And we've got new 2021 BAR, BAR automation and robotics, three-year degree. Health and biomedical sciences, three years in all of these majors. So again, there's a long list there, which I'll share with you. Um, Bachelor of Science, three years in all of these majors and a new combined bachelor and master degree. Biochemistry of nutrition, um, with Master of Biomedical Science, Molecular Life Sciences with the Master of Biotech and Bachelor of Science with the Master of Biotech. And then in our Humanities and Social Sciences, we've got a Bachelor of Arts, which is three year. And we have got, I think it's 27 majors, lots of languages, communication and media. Um, again, it's all on our website and I will share this with you. Um, and we have a new music and five fine arts. So the Bachelor of Arts, we have fine arts, history of art, musical, music, electronic music and sound design, music general studies or music studies. And we have got a Bachelor of Music, which is a double major. Physics, science and mathematics. These are all of the majors here within the Bachelor of Science. So um, I realize that is a whole suite of information, but as I said, I will share the links with you and I will just put up our entry requirements because for some of the new courses, there are new entry requirements. Um, but first of all, important dates for 2021 orientation week is in February, semester begins in February. Um, for dentistry, um, application, medicine and pharmacy, applications open in March and close in May. And then for semester two, it's a July intake. So here are the entry requirements um, for Thailand and I put Philippine next to it as well. So you can see our, the first one is new, Bachelor of Arts, Business, Music and Environmental Design, as in new uh, entry requirements. It's the Bachelor of Business is brand new. Arts, Music and um, have been with us for a while, but we have lowered the entry requirements for those courses. Um, Previously, they used to be the same as the line neck underneath. It used to be IB 27 and A levels 8, SAT 1150, plus 6, uh, 3.0. Um, but now those ones are on the top line. So it's a little bit easier to meet the entry requirements for those. Um, so the Bachelor of Biomedical Science, Commerce and Science, they remain as they have been in the past, SAT 1150 plus G, GPA of um, Matayam 6, 
And um, Bachelor of Automation and Robotics is a new one, which is a higher entry requirement. Um, so you can see it there if you're doing IB, A-levels, or Matayam 6 um, and SATs. Uh, and it's the same entry for the Bachelor of Politics, Philosophy and Economics, higher again for the Advanced Computer Science, which is new. Um, and then we have Direct Pathway for Medicine and Pharmacy and for uh, Dentistry and Juris Doctor. Um, I realize that medicine and all of those direct pathway is a whole whole one-on-one -on -one co consultation. So if anybody is interested in those specific information, this is just an overview, um, please let Cameron or I know, and we're happy to set up a one-on-one. -on -one. And finally, the Bachelor of Philosophy is 39 IB, 15 A level, and 1440 plus 3.8. The uh, exciting thing is, if you haven't uh, found out before, we have a Global Excellence Scholarship for you. And you don't have to apply for this scholarship. It's available for most of our courses, except for medicine and quoted courses. And it's for undergraduate and postgraduate. And you will, our admissions will apply it if you meet the entry criteria. So, um, to get a scholarship, um, it is uh, if you start off with the bottom line. Um, okay, so I've just done the uh, Matayam for Thailand there. If you get uh, 1210 plus 3.2, you will be, or we'll say IB. If you score IB of 29, for example, which is higher than the entry, you will be eligible for 5,000 Australian dollars scholarship per year. So because most of our courses are up to three or four years, so the total value if it was a four-year course would be 20,000. If you get IB 31, you get 8,000, so it's 32. If you score IB 35 or equivalent, $10,000 over four years is 40,000. And the highest value is if you score 39 um, IB or equivalent, you get $15,000 Australian dollars per year discount from your tuition fee over the four years. That's in, um, equal to 60,000 Australian dollars. So you can see it is not for these courses. These are excluded Juris Doctor, Medicine, Pharmacy, Dentistry, and Pod Medicine. Um, for postgraduate degree, uh, you need to have a completed bachelor's um, and the weighted average mark or a GPA. And we also have higher degree by research where you have to have evidence of research. So we also have the scholarship for postgraduates and it depends on your WAM. Um, so we can see here, if you have a WAM of 70, you get $5,000 per year, 75, 8,000, 80 is 10,000 and 85 is 15,000. Most of our postgrads are two years, so you would times two for the full duration. And here is the score for Thailand, the GPA, 3.3 up to 3.9, so B, B plus, or A. As I mentioned, I will share some flyers with you for the scholarship, and it's also on our website. Uh, H, H, higher degree by research, there are three steps. You have to find a supervisor. And these are the areas the you have to write directly to these email address. If you're looking for arts, business or law, send an email to hdr-fable at uwa.edu. If it's engineering, use this address. Health and medical science, you use hdr.fable 
HMS and science, it's just science. So you contact them to help you to find a supervisor and then they will send you an EOI. The, the admissions at those faculties will send you a form and you write a brief outline of your project um, and then you lodge your application. But this is your contact, these email contacts for all of that. Um, our English language requirements, we take IELTS, TOEFL, Pearson, IB diploma, A-levels, um, O-levels, and they're also on our website. Um, these are for other countries. Yep. So I mentioned earlier that we have a really good um, platform called Unibuddy, and I urge you to reach out, have a search, UWA Unibuddy, to chat with a current student or a staff member and um, have a look at their student experience blogs. And finally, if you want to do some research, these are our contacts, Facebook, um, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever platform you would like to reach out and uh, you can contact me for any other questions you may have. Happy to answer.